Okay, we're back. We're looking at 7.4, 7.5. We get uh, C3PO with a TA fired up here. <clears throat> so chapter seven, math 200, uh, seven, four, and seven, five. So what we're doing now is we're gonna be adding and subtracting radicals. And so let's um, take a trip down memory lane here. When we had five X plus three X, remember that was eight X. We just basically had like terms and we changed the number in front. We didn't change the power. And um, we're gonna keep that, we're gonna basically do the same thing here. This is like one square root of three plus seven square roots of three. And so that'll be eight square roots of three. That's it. So just like how you added like terms when you had variables there, we're gonna add up like terms with radicals. So if I have 10 square roots of two minus four square roots of two, that's six square roots of two. Um, this one I can't do anything with. The square root of 5 plus the square root of 3, I can't do anything. That's like saying x plus y. It's just x plus y. Uh, same with this. If I have the square root of 2 plus 4 cube roots of 2, I, I can't um, do anything with that. Those are unlike terms. All right? Now, here's an interesting scenario um, on the second uh, part of... Uh, 7.4 here. Um, simplify the radical expressions. So right now, as it stands, it looks like they're all unlike terms, like how this one was or this one was. But um, it's not. Let's take a look. We can um, break this down into negative square root of 25 times the square root of 3. We can break this down into the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And that's just going to say 3 squared to 3. So now look, this is uh, the square root of 25 is negative 5 square root of 3 plus the square root of 4 is 2 square root of 3 plus 3 square root of 3. So that's an interesting little problem because initially it looked like they were all in like terms, but when we simplified it, it turned out they were all exactly like terms. We got negative 5 square root of 3 plus two square roots of three, plus three square roots of three, that's actually zero. <laughs> so that's zeroed out. All right, let's get a couple more, or well, at least one more example of that. All right, so what if we have, cube root of 64 plus the cube root of 14 minus 9. Well, okay, so this one, the cube root of 64, that's a perfect cube already. We don't have to split it. It's just 4. 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 is 64 plus the cube root of 14 minus 9. And so we can't do anything with the cube root of 14, but we can put the 9 and the negative 9 and the positive 4 together. get uh, negative 5 plus the cube root of 14. All right, uh, let's look at another one. We got 3 cube roots of 45x cubed plus x roots of 5x. All right, so 3 is already on the outside. 45, though, perfects and leftovers. So perfect square hidden in 45, that would be 9 x squared. And then in the leftover bin, 9 times 5 is 45 x squared times x is x to the third. Well, check it out. Take the um, square root of 9 x squared, that's 3 times 3 x times square root of 5 x plus x squared to 5x. So look at what we have. Um, 9x square roots of 5x plus 1x square roots of 5x is 10x square roots of 5x. So 
That is our answer. And so that was, this is a pretty complicated one. Uh, let's take a look. How about another number one? Uh, the square root of 45 over 4 minus the square root of 5 over 3. All right. Well, first, the square root of 45 is um, what? Let's do that. The square root of 45 is the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. So that's 3 square roots of 5. So this is what we have. 3 square roots of 5 over 4 minus 1 square root of 5 over 3. So I need a common denominator for these two. It's an expression. So a common denominator is 12. And now I kind of work backwards. So this is times 3 top and bottom. So we've got 9 square roots of 5 on the top. This is times 4 top and bottom. 4 square roots of 5 over 12. And so now 9 square roots of 5 minus 4 square roots of 5 is 5 square roots of 5, and it's still all over 12. All right. So adding and subtracting radical expressions. Let's take a look at what happens when we multiply. So when we're multiplying, we've got the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 minus the square root of 2. So the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9. The square root of 3 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 6. And so we can't put those together, but what we can do is simplify the square root of 9. It's 3 minus the square root of 6. And then that's it. That's all we can do with that expression. Let's take a look at the next one. We've got the square root of 3 minus 8 times the square root of 3 plus 8. Oh, okay. So for those of you with really good memories, we have this special name for a binomial that looks like that. It's called a conjugate. So we're going to multiply the conjugates. Hopefully you kind of remember what happens when we multiply conjugates with one another. The square root of 9 plus, when I take 8 times the square root of 3, I just write it as 8 square roots of 3. When I take the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, I can actually multiply the 3s and get the 9 and put it all into the square root sign. So I can always multiply two things. It's the same idea as when you take x times x, it becomes x squared. And we take x times y, it just becomes xy. Same deal. Um, I did the square root of 3 times 8, so I can't really multiply them, but I can write them next to each other, 8 squared of 3. All right? So negative 8 squared of 3 negative 64. We'll check it out. What happens? Well, 8 square roots of 3 and negative 8 square roots of 3 are gone. The square root of 9 is 3 and minus 64 is still minus 64. So when I take this times this, I end up with just a regular everyday real number, negative 61. All right. All right, let's take a look at 7.5. That's rationalizing the denominator. That means that we don't want any kind of radical in the denominator. We never want a radical in the denominator. And so this is kind of easy to get rid of. How does one get rid of a square root of 2? Well, if I multiply top and bottom by itself, by the bottom, like the square root of 2 times the square root of three, 2 is the square root of 4, and the square root of 3 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 6. We don't really care about the top. When we're rationalizing the denominator, we don't care if the top has a square root in it. We're just trying to fix the bottom. And now we can take the square root of 4. That's 2. And so no more square root in the bottom. We have rationalized the denominator. We fixed it so there's not a square root in the bottom. Uh, number two is a little trickier. Let's erase these. The 
So now you might say, well, let's just look at one and do the exact same thing. Well, we can't because let's, let's look at what we have. We have six over the cube root of three times three. Nine is three times three, right? In order to make this into a perfect cube, I wouldn't want to multiply it by itself. If I multiply the cube root of nine times the cube root of nine, I get the cube root of 81. 81 is a perfect square, but not a perfect cube. So this is a little different. I need to get this to be a perfect cube. And all I need for it to be a perfect cube is three threes. So if I multiply top and bottom by the cube root of three, that will be what we want over the cube root of 27. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, but that is a perfect cube. So what is the cube root of 27? That's just 3. But wait, there's more. I can reduce now. Those are both outside. That one's stuck, so I can't reduce it with one under a cube root. But what I can do is divide top and bottom by 3 and get 2 cube roots of 3 over 1, or just plain old 2 cube roots of 3. All right? And then let's look at number 3. We've got the square root of 7x over 3y. Again... I'm only worried about fixing the bottom. If you notice that this one, the numerator was good. The top was good, and I kind of messed it up. Now the top isn't good, but the bottom was good. So we're rationalizing the denominator. Um, that's 3y. So this is, we're back to square roots. So we're just going to multiply top and bottom by itself. So on the top, those are both under the square root sign. So I can write square root of 21xy. On the bottom, it's the square root of 9y squared, but now that I multiplied it by itself, it's perfect. So that's 3y. So we get the square root of 21xy on the top, pretty messed up, but on the bottom, we just have 3y, which is no rational, no, no square roots. So it's no uh, irrational numbers on the bottom, so it's we've rationalized the denominator. All right? Lovely, lovely. So let's see. How do we fix? How do we fix it if they're adding or subtracting on the bottom? If it's like a binomial. It's going to be a little bit more complicated. So I want you to think back to a page ago when we multiplied it by its conjugate. That's what we're going to have to do to fix it. We cannot just say, oh, let's multiply the bottom by the square root of 2. Because that will fix this, but that will leave this as the square root of 6. And I'll still have a square root in the bottom. So the only way to get rid of it when there's, been, when there's addition is to multiply by... It's conjugate, the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3, the square root of 2 minus the square root of 3. All right? So on the top, we are going to get a mess. We're going to get the square root of 6 minus the square root of 9 plus 2 square roots of 2 minus 2 square roots of 3. Gluch. That's a big mess. But on the bottom... We're going to get the square root of 4 minus the square root of 6 plus the square root of 6 minus the square root of 9. So look at what happens. We get the negative 1 square root of 6 plus positive 1 square root of 6. So those go away. We get uh, the square root of 4 is really just 2. The square root of 9 is really just 3. So on the bottom, I have 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. On the top, I've got the square root of 6 minus 3 plus 2 square roots of 2, because right, the square root of 9 is 3, um, minus 2 square roots of 3. Goo <laughs> What a mess on the top. And so now if I distribute the negative throughout, if I basically divide that by negative 1, that by negative 1, that by negative 1, that by negative 1, there is my varying 
messy answer. All right, but we have rationalized the denominator. Now, not all of them are that bad, but um, that one was a particularly tough one. All right, so let's take a look at uh, the rest of seven five here. So we're on page 16 of your note packet. And so this is something, uh, Again, it's on the online homework, so I have to show you how to do it. And you will see this in, oh, in calculus? I think in calc, maybe calc three, where we're, we're worried about rationalizing the numerator instead of the denominator. So these three examples are to rationalize the numerator. So that means we want to fix the top. So same concept. Now, this is the square root of 12 over the square root of 7, but we should probably fix the square root of 12 first. So let's take that and break it into the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And over the square root of 7, and then let's take it to 2 square roots of 3 over the square root of 7. All right? So unfortunately, that didn't fix it all the way. Um, but what we can do now is multiply. So there's no square roots on the top. So this time we're going to fix it so the top doesn't have any square roots. And the bottom is stuck with whatever we leave it with here. These are expressions. So, um, so what do we have? 2 square roots of 9 over the square root of 21. But then 2 square roots of 9 is 2 times 3 over the square root of 21, and then that's 6 over the square root of 21. Now, I've had students in the past go, oh, wait, 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 now you can divide by 3. You can't. This has a square root on it. This doesn't. So either they have to both be outside, and then you could reduce it, or they have to both be under square roots, and then you could reduce it. But since 12 and 7 were relatively prime, we couldn't, we couldn't do anything other than this. All right, all right, so same as before, the cube root of three times three times y over the cube root of seven. Now we don't care about the bottom. We do care about fixing the top. So what I need, the reason I broke down nine into three times three times y is so you could see, you need groups of three to get out of this prison, remember? And so, what am I missing? The cube root of, I need one three, and I need two more y's. And then I need to do the same thing on the bottom. So on the bottom, I end up with the cube root of seven times three is 21, y squared. And that's on the bottom, and we don't care about that. We're rationalizing the numerator at the top. Oh, man, that's really sloppy. All right. Numerator. All right. Um, and so on the top, I now have the cube root of 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, y cubed. That's perfect. We fabricated it to be perfect. All right. And so we've got um, 3y on the top, and the cube root of 21y squared. I don't know if we fabricated it. I think that means when you make something with your hand. We orchestrated it, how about that? All right, and now again, on the top, we wanna fix it so there's no square roots. Well, I can't just do this trick, because I'd have to do the distributive property and I'd be left with a square root. So I have to multiply by its conjugate on the top. Uh, 
on the bottom, that's not going to make everything go away. So let's see what happens here. Let's play that one out. We've got the square root of x squared. We've got negative square root of xy. We've got positive square root of xy. We've got negative square root of y squared over square root of x squared minus the square root of xy minus the square root of xy plus the square root of y squared. So on the top, the square root of x squared is x. Square root of xy minus, square root of xy plus, they cancel. Minus sign is still there, minus sign, and then the square root of y squared is y. On the bottom, the square root of x squared is x, minus two square roots of xy, those do not cancel, they're both negative, so negative one, negative one is negative two, and plus y. And believe it or not, that's it. We have rationalized the numerator. Again, with, with algebra and even advanced algebra, we're usually focused on rationalizing the denominator. But um, in some, some applications of calculus, we're worried about fixing the, the numerator. All right? So that is it for 7.5. We'll see you on the video 7.6.